What I have with me today is the new Skoda Octavia. If you recall some 12 years back when Skoda first came into the country, their first car was the Octavia which they launched here. And the Octavia has also been a very popular car since then. But 12 years is a long time and like most of us, it too aged. So now comes the new Octavia as a replacement for the old one. The Skoda Octavia was launched in India in September 2001 and owing to its solid build quality along with the economy of a powerful diesel engine, it became an instant hit and remained a segment leader for many years. But all good things come to an end and so did the Octavia's popularity with a barrage of new launches from other manufacturers like Toyota which brought in the Corolla and from Honda, the Civic, which took over from the Octavia in terms of becoming the favorite of many buyers. Later launches included the Volkswagen Jetta, the Renault Fluence and the Hyundai Elantra. As the Octavia makes its re-entry into the segment, it is faced with stiff competition, as all these are extremely competent machines, but being the latest has always its advantages. This new Octavia uses the new MQB platform, which it shares with its parent Volkswagen's other models like the Golf and the Audi A4. While the old Octavia was solid and muscular, this one is sleek and stylish and it's a pleasant looking car too. Except for the fact that it bears a strong resemblance to all the other cars in the Skoda family. But anybody buying this car gets a new car, new platform, new engine and new styling. What I really like about this new Octavia are the interiors. Gone are the dark and somewhat gloomy interiors of the old one. This one is nice and cheerful. The two-tone beige and black really works and it creates an impression of space and brightness. Touch of leather, wood veneer adds to the class. The fascia is quite well laid out, not very cluttered and in the center is the multimedia display which is absolutely state of the art. It is what is called a touch screen. With a flick of finger, you can change radio stations, you can ask for car information. It's really nice. I like this business of touch. The steering with multifunction buttons for the radio and phone is leather wrapped and height adjustable. The seats come with lumbar support and the climate control with individual settings for the driver and the passenger. The fascia is neatly laid out and has a nice aesthetic appeal and there is plenty of place for knickknacks. The electrically folded outside rear view mirrors houses the indicators as well as the courtesy lights which dim 10 seconds after either locking or unlocking the car. Rain sensing wipers, auto dimming lights all add to the driving experience. The Skoda Octavia essentially remains a hatchback Pop open the hatch and you see an immense boot with 500 litres of space. Flip the rear seats down and the space doubles up to 1580 litres. The rear seats provide a touch of class and comfort with their light coloured leather contours. A huge armrest with bottle holders and plenty of leg and shoulder room. So how well does she drive? This is a new car and this is a new engine and the engine here packs in quite a nice punch with a very strong mid-range in the absence of any major turbo lag. Step on the gas and the response is fast and furious. Acceleration is very, very direct and she responds quite nicely. Every time you step on the gas pedal, the rev counter here goes into a nice rhythmic dance routine as she belts out one bhp after another. The insulation level is quite good and you don't hear much of the diesel engine out there.
the engine transfers power by the six speed manual transmission but i feel the addition of the sixth gear is taking things a cock too far for indian conditions argument for it is that with two overdrives it will stretch your fuel consumption that's true provided you get to use it driving in cities today at times it becomes difficult to even get to the fourth gear forget about the sixth so more often than not it remains only a nice gesture from the manufacturer without any functionality the suspension is set up more for europe and european conditions than for india in my opinion it's a trifle hard and i would have preferred a little softer suspension setup because in india the handling does not matter as much as the ride does and this car is positioned as a corporate car so if the big shot corporate honcho is sitting in the back seat i'm sure he won't be terribly terribly amused if he gets bounced around a lot Overall I feel that this new Octavia is a huge improvement over the outgoing model and it can be mid-level corporate India's everyday use car. It has the economy of a diesel motor, plenty of legroom and headroom in the rear seat and all creature comforts. But the big question is how is Skoda going to price it? If it's priced competitively, I am sure this is going to be as popular as the outgoing Octavia was. But a word of caution here, Skoda in the past had many problems with its dealership and spare parts were exorbitantly priced. So before you decide to park this in your garage, do check it out at your local dealership. But with the new management team in Skoda, things might have changed for the better. In terms of pricing, Skoda has priced it higher than the competition. Like Hyundai, which has priced their Lantra starting at rupees 13.71 lakhs for the base diesel, while the Volkswagen Jetta costs rupees 14.93 lakhs. and the Renault Fluence which starts at rupees 13.62 lakhs for the base diesel the Octavia base diesel starts at rupees 15.55 lakhs while the top end automatic is priced at rupees 19.45 lakhs the base petrol variant starts at rupees 13.95 lakhs If I am here at the race track early this morning then you can bet it's not because I am out for early morning jog to burn some calories but instead I am here to burn some serious rubber and this is what I am going to drive today If you thought that this was a regular Volkswagen Polo then possibly you didn't see the badging here the GT the GT which stands for excitement speed fun and of course the race track here yes all of that because what lies under the bonnet is the regular 1.6 liter diesel unit which does duty on the regular polo but this engine here has been fed on a steroid diet and it churns out 105 ps For petrol heads, only one thing matters: going fast, then faster, and then be the fastest. If that's your goal, then this Volkswagen Polo is enough reason for excitement. Volkswagen, inspired by its long legacy of motor racing and the enthusiastic reception of its Polo Cup racing in India, has been inspired enough to offer the Polo GT to enthusiasts. Who like an equally enthusiastic machine be it for a Sunday spin around the track or from getting from one red light to another in the fastest possible time either way it's about excitement and nothing really brings more excitement around the brand than the launch of a fast car and that's exactly what PW has planned to do with the Polo GT BW has been quite innovative in spite of the fact that they have been saddled with only one major brand in their portfolio which is the Polo but clever marketing doesn't stop because you don't have any new brands instead it steps up one more gear and this is an example for Polo buyers BW has launched an array of models to choose from 
you have the regular petrol and diesel variants, then you have the Polo TSI, Cross Polo for a bit more excitement, and then you have this GT for ultimate fun with the Polo. With increased power, fatter tires, and a short wheelbase, this Polo is good fun to fling around the racetrack. The handling is very, very confident. And this is a diesel engine too. Who would have thought a few decades ago that we would be driving diesel cars on the racetrack? But then times and technology has changed. The best part is that this Polo can be used on the track. But it's not a regular race car, by which I mean it doesn't have the hard seats and suspension and bare minimum in terms of creature comfort or convenience, the lack of which renders it unviable for everyday use. Instead, this is a regular car which you can drive to office on everyday basis. To distinguish it from the regular Polo, it not only wears the GT badging, but also has blacked out halogen headlamps, body colored exteriors, 15 inch alloy wheels, and the interiors come with automatic climate control, leather wrapped steering wheel, gear knob, and handbrake lever, and an aluminum pedal cluster to add to that racy image, and an array of features like parking sensors and an audio system with USB and Bluetooth, which makes it very practical as well. If you thought that the GT badge cars were only about power and performance, then you wouldn't have been more wrong. Sure, this Polo GT here rides on fat tires and churns out 105 PS, but in terms of fuel efficiency, she is one of the best. At 19.7 kilometers, according to ARI, these figures are really, really impressive, even if you were to discount it by 20% for everyday driving. So what have you got here? A car that will give you all the comforts and carry you in style wherever you want to go and at the end of the week turn into a race car to bring out the petrol head in you. It's a well-known fact that before any major social event or do, the women, well, they have to visit the beauty parlors. The men, nowadays they've got their salons. But what about the cars? Is there any place where we can take the cars to take, get all spruced up? Cars come to steam and shine. Hey Anurag. Hi, how are you doing? Good man, nice to see you. Uh, tell me what you guys do at the spa over here. What we're doing over here is that we're protecting the car's paint for at least six months with the paint sealant and at least two years paint and the shine with the ceramic coating and that's the most premium coating that we offer. What about the cost difference? Uh, they say the beauty comes at a price. The paint sealant starts from 4,000 rupees, goes up to 15,000 whereas the, the OptiCoat Starts from 15,000, goes up to 28,000. The permanent ceramic coating works absolutely fine and will, of course, enhance the shine and the look of your car wherever you go. This is awesome, but uh, something's just caught my eye. I didn't know you guys do chrome plating. Is that is that chrome plated jack? No, it's not a it's not a plating. It's just a wrap. I'll make you meet Sunny. He'll explain you more about the the wrap. Sunny, right? Hi, Vinny. Hey, brother. This is awesome. I mean. I have never seen anything like this. You, you must tell me what this uh, whole process is. How, how, how do you do this? Vineet, this is a car wrap. Okay. Basically, it's like a lamination. Okay. We laminate the whole car in the vinyl. You can get the color of your choice. Or whichever, yeah. whichever color you want. All right. There are a lot of colors that you can choose from. Okay. You can go for the carbon. Ooh, you got a pink. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's for the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a lot of uh, colors and matte finishes, and then we have got gloss. And then we have carbon fiber as well. That'll be popular with the sports cars, guys. Yeah, right? a lot of guys who want a sporty look, uh, give a sporty look to their car, they go for the carbon fiber. And then we have uh, something more elegant, which is the brush metal, give the look of a bare metal. Wow. What we have here on this car is the chrome wrap. So this is the vinyl. 
that we are uh, using. Oh, it's got the sticky back on it, right? Yeah, so it sticks onto the car. And the best part about this is it is reversible. So whenever you get bored of this color, or whenever you want the car to look original, you can peel it off and it won't ha uh, damage the paint. It won't do anything wrong with the paint. We have to dismantle the headlights, the tail lights, and the door handles in order to give the paint a very nice, perfect finish. Because uh, it, do it doesn't, it should not give the illusion of a sticker or a lamination. It should look like a proper paint job. So how do you get it to bend between the edges and all like stuff like the vinyl that we are using is okay. conformable. So we have to heat it and then we can we apply it. We can conform it to any shape we want to. How much does something like this cost? Chrome can be anywhere between 2 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs. I also noticed you've got a beast over there next to the beauty and uh, that's the sports car with the complete matte look. Sunny, this looks like a matte kind of a paint job, correct? No, this is again a wrap. This is also a wrap? Yes. And uh, this is a matte black wrap. If you feel it, it's as good as a paint job. It's very smooth. This, yeah, exactly. It doesn't have any rough smudges no, or not nothing at all. on uh, it. it is... Wraps are very smooth. Any sort of wrap you get on the car, it's very smooth. It's gonna look just like a paint job. It won't feel anything like a vinyl. And uh, on this car, we have done uh, a, a combination of carbon fiber and matte black. Well, that so looks as you can really see, cool, yeah. the roof beading here is carbon fiber. The air intakes are carbon fiber, and the rest of the car is in matte black. This is obviously cheaper than the chrome bit, yes? Literally, like, literally half the price, less less than half the price. For the chrome wrap, we'll take around five to seven days to wrap the whole car. And for the matte finishes, we can take anywhere between two to four days. So tell me something, you meet these owners and all, what brings them here to you? What are they actually looking for? They're all looking for exclusivity. They want to stand out in the crowd. Whenever they want to go somewhere, they want to look very exclusive. So that's the reason why people get their cars wrapped. Well, this is fantastic. You know, it, it's, it's really great to see people who actually want that kind of exclusivity in today's world. But better than that, it's actually great to see people who actually offer this kind of service. Thank you so hey, much. Dude, this is great. Fantastic kind of service. And Stephen Chai. This is my first time on the Yamuna Expressway and I have to say I'm quite impressed with the eight-lane uncongested highway with butter smooth surfacing that really allows one to enjoy a great drive. This 160 kilometer stretch of road is perhaps one of the best in India and an important one as it connects Agra and Delhi. Agra of course is famed for one of the most beautiful man-made monuments that's ever built. So today I'm driving towards that monument of love. The Taj Mahal. I'm on the expressway with the trusted Fiat Linear. Now I've been driving this car for a while, but to be honest, the more I drive this car, the more impressed I am with its performance. It's smooth, it's superior, it's powerful. Everything I'm looking for in a car, plus it's economical. Now before I drive on any further, I'm going to quickly pull over to grab a quick cup of chai. Now this is the mark of a really good highway when it's got the kind of facilities you really need during a driving break. The area is nice and clean and provides for basic amenities such as freshening up or grabbing a quick snack. Something I wish all highways had. Agra's history is largely recognized with the Mughal Empire. This city was established much before and is even linked back to the Mahabharat period. The golden age of the city began with the Mughals under the emperors Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan. I can't believe I've reached the Taj Mahal in just three hours and that too in a relaxed manner. I've parked my car, now I get to hop into an electric rickshaw. The electric rickshaw or golf cart is a great way to cut down on vehicular pollution.
The Taj Mahal is one of the most famous buildings in the world, the mausoleum of Shah Jahan's favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. It is one of the new seven wonders of the world and one of the three World Heritage Sites in Agra. Completed in 1653, the Taj Mahal was built by the Mughal King Shah Jahan as the final resting place for his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal. The Agra Fort, also known as Lal Kila, is a symbol of power, strength and resilience as it stands today in full glory. Sikandar Lodi was the first Sultan of Delhi who shifted to Agra and lived in the fort, but it was only during the reign of Akbar's grandson, Shah Jahan, that the fort took on its current state. At the end of his life, Shah Jahan was restrained by his son Aurangzeb in the fort. It is rumored that Shah Jahan died in Mausaman Burj, a tower with a marble balcony with a view of the Taj Mahal. The fort was the site of a battle during the Indian Rebellion of 1857, which caused the end of the British East India Company's rule in India and led to a century of direct rule of India by Britain. After all this sightseeing, it'll be nice to take a break and check out the market. Famous for marble handicrafts, these souvenirs make the perfect gift for friends and family. Now this is what Agra is really famous for. Peta, really fresh, really juicy. Mmm, must try if you're here. And must pack for friends and family to take home. Time sure flies. It's almost late evening and it's indeed been a wonderful trip. The new Yamuna Expressway is a great driving experience and so is my Fiat Linea. It's time for me to jump back into the driver's seat and enjoy the drive back to Delhi. See you next week.